Welcome back to the last part of chapter 8 where we've been looking at solutions and reactions that occur in water, also known as aqueous reactions. In this final part, we're just going to look at oxidation reduction reactions and gas evolution reactions. And you are only going to have to identify these, okay? You're not going to have to balance oxidation reduction or anything like that. We actually cover that in Chem 2. Um, so you have that to look forward to. But um, we're, you're just, you just need to be able to look at different reactions such as oxidation reduction, gas evolution, precipitation, acid base, and identify which type of reaction that is. And so in this final part, we're just going to look at the redox, which is oxidation reduction, and gas evolution. So gas evolution is where a gas forms, okay, but it forms from where you didn't have a gas before that, okay. That's how you can tell it's a gas evolving um, because there are no gases in the reactants, okay. That's very important. And so you don't have to be able to predict what the gases are going to be, um, for this particular unit, but you do need to be able to, be, to look at it and say, okay, I had aqueous and aqueous, and I produced a gas, so therefore that is a gas evolving reaction. Now you do get particular gases depending on what your products are, like a carbonate is going to produce carbon dioxide, a sulfite is going to produce SO2, sulfur dioxide, and ammonia in H4OH is going to produce ammonia gas. So you do have very specific ones, okay? But you just need to be able to say, okay, it didn't have any gases in the reactants. It does have a gas in the product. Therefore, it is gas evolving. And so this is just a nice pretty picture of what it looks like. You can always tell if it's gas evolving because it's going to bubble because that, that is the gas molecules that are being liberated and making their way to the surface so they can escape the solution. So you will not have to do this, okay, but I'm going to show you how to write an equation for the gas evolving. Remember, you're only going to have to identify them, but you should be able to do this, right? So you're going to have nitric acid and you're going to, um, which is aqueous, strong acid, right? And you're going to add that to sodium carbonate, which is going to be Na2CO3, because this is a plus one, that's a minus two, right? Okay, and so I showed you on that little chart beforehand that you're going to produce what? You're going to produce a salt, which is going to be NaNO3, okay, that looks like normal. Then you're going to produce water, and you're going to produce CO2 gas. Everybody else is aqueous, okay? So that gas, the CO2, is what the is what gas you produce from the CO3, and if you um, a lot of times like you'll use an acid to clean the um, carbonate residue on like a coffee pot or something. I think you know in your home you're probably going to use acetic acid to do that, but if you put it directly on there, you should see it bubble a little bit, and that's because a carbonate is formed inside because you have carbonates in your water. And it's interesting because the amount of carbonate you have, the harder the water is. And if you're with me here in um, Huntsville, Madison, Alabama, or in Limestone County, which is right next door, then uh, limestone is also a carbonate and your whole county is named for that. So you can imagine that you probably have pretty hard water and you're going to have a lot of carbonate residue. So if you see white build up on things, that's what that's from. And so there's your one to do with hydrobromic acid and potassium sulfite. And if you can't remember what the gas is uh, that's produced by the SO3, 
okay then you can go back and you can look at that table um, that was on one of the preceding slides and it tells you which gas it is okay and then finally I'm asking you for the a net ionic equation for that so good practice okay but remember you just have to identify them oxidation reduction I'm going to tell you about these um, but you're going to be identifying them as whether they are oxidation or reduction. If you take me for Chem 2, you're going to get to know all about this uh, more than you want to know, probably. Um, but for now, we're just going to be able to tell if it is a redox or not, okay? So, in an oxidation reduction reaction, we call them redox because you have two reactions actually going on. One thing is reduced and one thing is oxidized, okay? A lot of times it involves oxygen. Combustion, okay, which we've talked about before, I think, where you take hydrocarbon, add oxygen to it, and you make CO2 in water. That is a specific type of redox. So if you had two choices on a reaction, of redox or combustion, you'd pick combustion because that's more specific than redox, okay? So you wanna be more right, so you would pick the more specific. So notice that these, when we're adding oxygen to them, like rusting metal um, and, and, and different things, you are, um, these are redox reactions. And so, um, you can make water from hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. You really um, kind of explode it. And then <laughs> you get moisture from that reaction which, um, and in the form of water molecules. Okay, So if you have a hydrogen balloon and you have oxygen and you have an ignition source, then you're going to make water, but you're also going to make an explosion. Okay, so... How do we identify them? Now remember, what I'm asking you is, is this a redox or not? And if it's not, tell me what kind it is. Okay, so for example, the other thing that you can look for for a redox is if you have a metal by itself, either on the left or the right hand side. If it's just magnesium or potassium solid, okay, that is a great indicator that this is going to be a redox reaction. Okay, so in the first one, I have a metal by itself with oxygen making magnesium oxide. So that is definitely a redox. The second one, I have HBr and CaOH. Okay, now I'm going to stop and I'm going to think for a minute. I've seen that kind before and that is not a redox, is it? What is it? It's acid base or neutralization, okay? Because you've got it between an acid and a base. Okay, so it's not a redox, it's an acid base. And the final one, I have zinc solid by itself and I have iron by itself over here. Now, even though I don't see an oxygen, it's probably carried out in the presence of oxygen. So this is definitely a redox as well. You don't have to always show that there's oxygen for it to be a redox. Sometimes the metals themselves are going to actually participate in the oxidation reduction. So our big clue is a metal by itself, either on the product or the reactant side, and that's going to tell you that it is a redox. So here's some for you to try. And remember, if it's not then um, try to identify what kind it is because you're going to be identifying these types of reactions on the test. And that's it for chapter 8 and that's it for identifying redox and uh, gas evolving reactions.